welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I'd like to welcome you all to the next episode of Take In today's episode, we're going to be talking about singing. Whether it be ghost simulator, simulated racing, life simulator, all the simulators you can ever think of. And we're going to be asking a very crucial question. Ah, sir, a gateway. Thank you very much. I'd like you to sit back, enjoy the racing, listen to the banter, and let me know what you think. Welcome to Pixel Therapy. Hello everybody. Now after having shamelessly exploited the uh, the Assetto Corsa intro there, um, let's jump into a race and answer this crucial question, shall we? Are Sims actually a gateway medium? Now where's this question coming from? Well, why am I asking this question here? Well, basically I am new to sim racing. I have only been doing it for literally about two months. And my background prior to doing this was that I didn't play a lot of racing games. I mean, yes, I did own a copy of Need for Speed or I don't know what other racing game is out there. I think it was mostly Need for Speed, actually, if I think about it. I did own a copy of Need for Speed and I did play that on my pad and I did enjoy playing those games. Uh, I think the most serious race I did pick up was Gran Turismo back in the day, um, but I didn't even uh, play that with a wheel, I did it with my pad. That was my relationship with sim races. And with regards to watching motorsport as a motorsport enthusiast, yeah, that, that wasn't me. I wasn't the guy who turned on the television to watch cars zoom around uh, on a lap uh, for however long, 90, 90 or so minutes. That wasn't my jam, I had nothing against it but it just wasn't me. So what happened? Well, essentially what happened about two months ago was I was bored and I noticed that they had a discount wheel for a Thrustmaster wheel. It was the T80, which is a very cheap, low entry wheel. So it's got no force feedback and it doesn't even have the fancy gears or the belt driven systems. It's just got a bungee cord to give it a springy feel when you turn it, right? And it came with a really cheap, simple set of pedals. So I got the wheel, but the incentive to get the wheel was that it came out with a brand new copy of Dirt 4. So that's kind of recently when all of this happened. And I played Dirt 4 and I was like, yeah, I, I buy racing games. I got Need for Speed. I got me some Gran Turismo back in the day. I'll get Dirt 4, I'll do some riling. And if it comes with a cheap entry wheel, fine. I'll do it at the same time. Got the wheel, fired up the game. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It was a love at the first sight. I was in love. And I thought to myself, this stuff is awesome. Why have I not? I've been playing video games for over 10 years. Why am I only just noticing this? But anyways, enjoyed it i loved it and then i jumped on the dirt 4 forums because i was like okay okay i'm going online i need people who are hardcore i need people who i can race with i really want to experience it and it was when i went online that i actually discovered this deep rich sim culture and i realized that there's a lot more to do to learn and to grow in when it comes to sims so, after a romantic dinner and, uh, and, 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 and cuddling up to my, to my girlfriend and doing all kinds of chores, I convinced her to let me upgrade my wheel, which mind you was less than a month old, to a, uh, to a T300 Thrustmaster wheel, which if you guys know anything about consumer wheels with false feedback, uh, the Thrustmaster TC wheel, when racing on a console, is one of the top uh, branded 
wheels you can get out there there are other brands you do have your club sport elite wheels and you have from fanatic from fan attack rather and you do have your uh your logitech wheels like the g29 and g27 um so th this isn't necessarily a whole uh wheel comparison video that's not what this is about what i'm simply saying is th this is slightly more serious hardware right especially for a console if you want to go hardcore then you're on the wrong thing you should be on a pc but that's a whole different cost and that's probably not going to happen anytime soon me upgrading from a console to getting a rig and putting that together and then going for a direct drive wheel because that's literally thousands of dollars right there however what i am saying is for those who have made that transition i get it i understand my eyes have been opened i see the light i am picking up what you're putting down and any other analogy for me to simply say i understand the point so yeah i i I guess what I want to do in this video is just kind of talk about my journey and talk about how I feel from this sim I have grown and I have started to appreciate things about the racing subculture that I didn't appreciate before. Not so much that it has changed my opinion, but it has more brought to light. So we've got different types of sims, racing or otherwise, right? And the main thing that the main thing that Sims are trying to do is to bring a level of realism right into what it is that we're doing. And I think that's sort of where Sims either that's a make or break point with Sims. People look at Sims and they judge them by their uh, their 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 attempt take artificial technology the inputs the software the hardware and to simulate to artificially replicate real world uh physics laws and rules and principles right and this whole make or break thing is where you get the the, the little things that i have identified with sims that have made me enjoy them a lot more. So for example, the first thing that I loved about Sims is I got to understand what the real world counterparts go through when they're racing. So I always looked at racing and I saw guys who had some upbringing that allowed them to get into a very expensive sport at a very early age and go really really fast in very expensive cars and i was like good for them kudos not a lot of people can do it why are you putting your life on the line you know what i mean couldn't you find an easier more safer way to make a million dollars a year or however much they make but i didn't understand the amount of concentration that was required not until I had my first sim race and it was 45 laps and I had to sit down and concentrate and drive the car in such a way that I was fast, I was competitive and I was consistent. And that is something, an element of racing that I never considered. Consistency. It's not about just being fast, it's about being fast without losing consistency and uh, maintaining it for a very long time and I got that and I had a newfound respect for racers especially you know the Le Mans with the drive for 24 hours I was like okay it's hard enough to do you know a 10 hour journey when you're driving from one place to another in a normal car moving at the regular speed limit let alone doing it at about over hundreds of miles per hour or hundreds of kilometers per hour depending on what system you are and where you live but basically going really really fast i respect that for 24 hours and still be alive let alone 
not break one of two cars that probably cost millions of dollars each to provide. That's a lot of pressure. I didn't know, I didn't think about it that way until I started sim racing. So now when I watch a motorsport, I'm like, whoa, those guys are good. So that's the first thing I liked about Sims is that it brought to light a different part of the subculture that I never actually thought about. The second thing that I liked about Sims is like, I guess maybe the satisfaction people get from playing Souls-like games, like, you know, Dark Souls and Demon Souls, those very difficult video games, is there is a learning curve. So, when I played my Need for Speed games, I would fire the, bat, the game up, I would grab my game pad, I would go to the next race, and I would just race. And if I didn't do well in that race, I would hit restart, and I would start again, and I would race, until I got the race. And that was it. I didn't have to tune the car. I, the car didn't even, I didn't even waste any time trying to consider whether the car felt like it should in real life based on the way it was set. It was just, here's a car, here's a pad, I need to go fast. I would smash into other cars to win. I would knock other, and they encourage that. That's how the game is played and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying that's what you do when you're playing a game like Need for Speed, right? You smash into stuff and you knock all the police cars and your opponents off the track. And that's how you win. You drive dirty, you know? And so, whereas with this, for example, you have to learn the track, which is what I'm doing right now, actually. For those of you who think I'm not going fast, there's a reason. So basically, the reason I'm not going fast is, two months ago, like I said, when I started doing this, I jumped online and I started drive racing online. And people online, as with anything, you get your trolls, you get your people who don't know what they're doing, and there's different skill levels. So I thought to myself, actually, I've spent a lot of money on this wheel, and I actually want to have a good race. So I joined one of those racing forums, right? And um, I got myself the simulated game, so I got myself Project Cards for about $30, and I got myself a copy of uh, Assetto Corsa for $26, so these games have been out for a while, so I managed to get them for a pocket. And then, uh, there were these group of guys who were like, hey, look, we know you're new, and, but that's cool because we all had to start somewhere and we all had to learn. So you're probably not going to get into any actual seasons, racing league seasons, but on Monday night, we all get together. We've got our own little mini season. It doesn't matter if you're terrible at racing, right? You will learn. And if you want to sort of hone your skills and get your head around it, this is the place to do it. So what did I do? I joined. They were halfway through the season. I think I joined on the fifth race out of seven. So there's no way I'm winning it. That's not the point because I haven't been there for more than half of the races. And also because I'm pretty shit compared to them. But it was all about simply saying, hey, um, here's an environment where you can learn. And so I haven't driven any of these tracks before. Because I wasn't into driving. I think the first one was, um, and excuse my pronunciation because this is the first time I'm talking about these things. So if I'm getting it wrong, please feel free to correct me. But Imola, that was the first track that we did. That was 45 laps. That was a task in itself because one, I had to drive the car and not spin off and smack into someone and ruin someone's season. But also things like my leg was cramping up from hard, from braking too hard. And I got tired and I, I, and slowly the mistakes started to creep up and I started to feel like this is what a real world race car driver goes through and that was what hit me and that's what, that was the first time I felt like a real race car driver. The second thing, uh, the one that we did was uh, Valu, Valunga, I think that's how you say it and we did 33 laps on that as well and again. It was a little bit shorter, but same thing. It felt genuine, it felt real. But also, the fact that I had built some stamina through practice and I could last a lot longer in my focus and I raced just a little bit better, I could see me learning. I could see a sense of progression in my skill. I actually felt that I had gone, I had transitioned from just playing a video game to actually learning skills about driving that I didn't have before. So I had to practice my left foot braking. 
I've just recently bought an H patch and shifter or a stick uh, for those of you that are American to learn how to uh, I know how to drive a stick I what well, my first car was a stick car so that's not an issue but learning how to you know go down gears using um, heel, the heel to toe method which if most people who aren't into racing might not know what that is but that's basically just uh, blipping the throttle while your main foot is on the brake so just sort of sticking your foot out while your foot's on the brake and just jabbing at the throttle to increase the RPMs as you shift down into a gear so that you match the engine with the uh, uh, with the clutch basically with the with the with the gear system and yeah that's technical racing sort of jargon I didn't know that they did that but anyways the point is that's something I want to learn there is a learning progression so, like I was saying that I haven't raced these tracks before in this, this racing game. So my process is, I jump on a track I've never been before, like this one. I put the racing line, like this time, as you can see on the screen. And the reason I do this, is that I initially start off by doing a few slow laps. Between 5 to 10, depends on the track, depends on the day, depends on my mood, depends on how tired I am. And what I'm learning instinctively, just by doing this, as I'm talking to you, is that I'm learning where my car is meant to be on the track. I'm learning the turns and the apexes. I'm slowly, just naturally getting an idea of what gear I need to be in when I take a certain turn. I'm getting an idea of when and how hard to brake before a turn, you know? And as that's happening, slowly I begin to get a little bit faster at a time, as you can see here. And I will get to a point where I feel like, okay, I'm fast enough, now let's bring in some AI, artificial intelligence. So I fire up the game again, but this time with AI. So now here's the, the thing, the AI, I put them at either the easy or medium skill level. Why? Because that is my skill level. When I get better, I will put them on a more harder difficulty rating. But basically, I want to set them up in such a way that there's some AI I can overtake real easy, within the first two laps and then some that I'm never gonna catch that's in front but within eyesight I need to be able to see them so not so much that they're so quick they drive by and I never see them again but they're just within reach and I'm fighting to get closer to them so most of you who do driving games especially sims you know that the AI generally breaks up into groups so you get the super quick ones that are in front of you and those are the ones that you're aiming for and striving to get to and then you get the um, you get the middle pack which is kind of where you you probably really at and then you get those feel good AI that's the AI that you uh, you overtake within the first two laps just to make sure you don't come dead last so based on your skill level you do that and the reason like I said is you want to be in the middle so that you're used to having AI behind you and driving in traffic which is very different from this because when you're online, you're with other cars, i.e. traffic, and your racing line, like I'm saying, I'm learning about the racing line and where the car is meant to be in relation to the track, changes when you're with another car. Because another car might be in this spot, or you might need to break away from your typical racing line to overtake another car, right? So, the AI helps with that skill. So there's a, a to go back to my main point, there is a transition there's a learning curve there's a learning process and I never had to do any of that with the needs for speed then once I've got the AI down now you're coming to speed consistency and and uh, the car itself so for example it's gonna take me a while that corner that I just overshot to actually register that it's there so once I get to a point where I can take this cleanly without skidding off knowing where it is then you start going for speed you now start to try to do it in a faster time and that involves you looking at your car and going back to that settings page on the vehicle camber and tow and knowing what each element does to the car on this particular track and tweaking it so the settings you saw me putting in were the settings from my previous race and the previous track that's how the car handled but that's a different track it had longer straights 
the, the, the turns weren't as tight as some of the turns are on this track and therefore it's set up differently. So I'm gonna get to a point where I can't go any faster without spinning out on this and I'm gonna have to go back to the drawing board and tweak the car. And to me, that's the fun part about Sims. That's the thing where with a Sim you feel like not only are you the race car driver when you're racing, but you're also the engineer and you're also the tech person. And I believe a good Sim uses software hardware which is normally done by the third party and it brings that experience to you that's what people are paying for and so that is how i feel that this particular sim the racing sim were a gateway for me because they made me experience things in gaming that i didn't necessarily that i either hadn't experienced before or maybe it'll be more honest to say haven't experienced in a long time right now I do understand talking about learning curves, it's not just Sims that do this. You get your, your Souls-like games, like your Dark Souls games, where there is a learning curve. You know, you learn about a boss, you learn how to take down a big boss, and it takes a while. And there is a huge difference between someone who uh, has been playing Dark Souls or uh, Bloodborne is another one, or whatever difficult game. There's a difference between someone who's just picked up the game and someone who's sunk in 20 or 30 hours into it, right? A huge difference. But here's the thing, and this is my opinion, it's not a transferable skill. Whatever time or whatever skill you have learned in Bloodborne or Dark Souls or whatever game that's difficult, you're not going to use that in the real world. With this, arguably, you see I almost blew my engine there learning about how car engines work and over revving it in a low gear. I mean, fair enough, that is common sense, I never knows that. But that's my point. It's transferable into the real world. The heel and toe uh, technique that I'm trying to learn when I install my new shifter, that's transferable. That's what real race car drivers do. Left foot braking, what I'm doing right now, that's a real skill. I could get into a real race car and do that. I'm not saying I'll be great at it, but it's something that they'll be like, yeah, that's something you have to get down. So I thought that was awesome. I feel like I'm having a blast. I'm playing a game, but I'm also learning. I'm developing. I'm growing as a person. And I have been given insight into a new system, a new culture, a new motorsport racing that I had never seen before. Now this channel is called Pixel Therapy, right? And in my mind, from my opinion on a very high surface level, therapy really is about you going to someone else, a psychologist with medical degree, and them, and you sort of talking about whatever it is that you're going through, and them putting a different perspective on it based on, you know, psychological science right but basically what they're doing is they're allowing you to look into a particular issue with a different set of eyes and maybe take some time to look into some insightful ways of thinking about something that's what i feel this sim has done with racing to me i feel that i am looking at racing as a culture as a sport as a discipline with a different set of eyes, with a different understanding, and from a different point of view. That is kind of a therapy. And that, to me, if you're playing a game and it does that, that's what this channel is about. It's talking about issues like that, and I think that's a good game. Another game that I've sort of seen that maybe has got to do with that, which isn't a sim, and I'm not saying only sims do this, one that is not a sim that does that apparently, is the new PlayStation exclusive. It's called uh, Hellblade. And the main character that you play there apparently is a schizophrenic, I think? Or has, don't quote me on that, but they have some form of disorder. And all the combat and the fighting in that game is actually her fighting her demons in her head. But apparently it was done so well that it brought to light things like discussions about mental illness, you know? And getting people thinking about, hey, is this what someone who maybe who suffers from a mental illness could be experiencing? 
and not saying that that is what it is exactly but it's it got people thinking about that stuff people who maybe never had any reason to think about that stuff because they never knew anyone with the mental illness and they never had to deal with it in their lives and i think when gaming as a culture as a an art form starts to do that to take real world issues and present them to you in a way in which you can find entertainment and at the same time be educated that is when it starts to transcend as a medium from what our parents i guess think we do in our basements in the dark all day to something that is legitimately embraced by society which i think right now is everyone games now so now the average age for a gamer is about 34. so and that but that part of that is actually just because they, that's the generation that grew up doing it um but yeah i think to a more mainstream media they start to appreciate it and sims i guess tend to benefit with that a lot more easily because that's what they're trying to do off the bat they're saying hey here's the real world this is what we think our best representation for the real world and its principles is so look at that just spinning out of control because i'm not i'm not uh, caressing the throttle the way i need to be i'm just flooring it anyways uh, is them saying that this is what we think the real world is and representing it in the best way they possibly think is realistic and you then learning, growing and appreciating that for what it is uh, so those are my tech takes on it um, another thing that I think just uh, while we're on the subject is the issue of technology I think Sims tend to warrant themselves to very niche technologies and one of these is VR now we've got all of these manufacturers coming from different places be they PC or console trying to sell us on the idea of virtual reality and how it is the next best thing I'm gonna be honest I have a PlayStation 4 console I saw the Vive, I saw the HTC, I said cool, cool, but I'm not buying one of those. I'm not spending $600 on any of that equipment because I haven't seen it being applied in a way in which I think it justifies or it outdoes the current mediums that I think. And I've seen people try and play first person shooters in VR. I get it, but I'm not gonna pay for it. I'm not gonna pay to put on a VR headset and pretend to shoot a guy, especially with the claim that it's more immersive and run around and try and shoot a dude. But when I move my character and when I look, when I look around with the headset, I feel like I'm in the place. But when I move my character, I can feel my butt is seated down. And then when I point out and I shoot someone, I can see my hands, but I can't see my arms that disconnected from the rest of my body. It doesn't make sense there's a disco however sim racing in VR well let's look at that analogy that I put in again when you put on the headset and you look around does the world look the same yeah you feel like you're actually in the environment okay when you're driving around you're using a steering wheel do you see a steering wheel in the virtual reality thing yes okay uh, is your foot is your butt seated on the seat in the game yes it is okay then I think VR could be the best, in fact VR for it to be utilized in the most best and effective way, it is through this, racing games, racing games and flight simulation games. I think those are the two mediums where VR should shine and I think those are the two mediums that VR needs to aggressively attack. They, they can try them to sell themselves to any other person out there, but there is no reason why HTC Vive and Oculus Rift and the PlayStation 4 are not fighting to ensure that they are on every racing game out there. Because I think that's the only time someone will pay that amount of money and think that they've got the full experience without having to make any compromise. The only compromise you would make is the lack of G-forces when you're racing. Because your body would feel, oh, I don't feel my body being pushed side to side as a tank turns. But that's where the wheel comes in, right? The wheel with the force feedback 
was designed in such a way to try and compensate for the lack of g-forces as much as possible and then you have the wheel rigs the ones with the motorized seat that actually shifts you back and forth so the equipment is there to try and compensate for that so that's not the vr's job to do the vr's job is already done with the racing so that's another thing where sims could come in to introduce new technology that's the point that i'm making i'm going to bring it back on the sim is that new technology should be tested and perfected using sims because the sim audience is willing to fork out that kind of money to try new technology that makes their sim more real realistic you know they're the only people who go out and spend 800 dollars on a steering wheel no other gamer does that unless it's into sim racing you know what i mean so yeah i think sims are a gateway thing and i guess what i kind of want to do is find out what sims do you guys play what sims have you tried um did you enjoy them did you stick with them did you commit and actually get into it more if you did what hardware did you have to uh did you have to buy did you have to are you in a relationship and did you have to bribe either your girlfriend or your parents or whomever to actually fork out the cash for this sort of thing yeah just let me know and um i'm starting to spin out of control here I did a pretty clean race, but I think I'm really getting into talking quite a bit and I'm starting to get distracted. And also I think partly it's because I'm not starting to push the car to see how quick I can go. Um, but yeah, Sims, are there gateway media? Yes or no? I vote yes. I was never into racing. I'm now more into it than anything else and it started with a Sim. It started with a Sim, done well, it started with and yeah, you can argue Dirt 4 is not a sim, but it's the same thing. Look at that, I blew my engine. Engine's not working. That right there is thing. Why? Because I wasn't concentrating and I shifted the gears too low and the engine is gone. I'm putting my foot down. You can see the green bar on the screen, but no acceleration. Gotta love this stuff. You have to love this stuff. Also, a thing that I learned is that uh, when you're doing online racing and you are recording it, it's probably in your best interest not to have the damage on 100% like I do, so that you don't have instances like that while you're trying to make it. Anyways, uh, I think I've rambled on enough. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like and please subscribe. Um, I'll be doing a whole bunch of videos. I think I did a live stream of uh, Don't Starve. I know it's an old game, but that's not what it's about. It's here at Pixel Therapy. It's not about getting all the new games. It is about just getting games that we enjoy, having a yarn, talking about different aspects about gaming as we go on. Now, with that being said, take advantage of that and write in the comments what game you'd like to see me play. What game you'd like to talk about or topics within gaming you think you want to hear me talking about. So put your comments below, like the video, subscribe. Um, I know you hear that from all the other YouTubers. There is a reason, my reason. It lets me know what you guys want to do, what to put up next, and how to go. Um, I'm probably going to be getting a uh, copy of Destiny 2 this weekend. And then maybe I might do another live stream of that as well. I might get some uh, online people friends to jump online and play with me while I do that. And um, yeah, so that should be good. That should be some good gameplay, something different as well as play a shooter. So it's not all just going to be racing here, guys. It's going to be all kinds of games. And arguably, maybe some tv show reviews i don't know about that but technically tv shows are seen on screens and screens have pixels and this is pixel therapy but so i haven't decided whether i'm actually gonna expand the mediums that i'm gonna talk about and look at but because uh, i like watching movies so and i like watching a lot of tv shows so if i can comment and share my thoughts on that kind of stuff as well hey no worries i'm, I'm down to do that but um yeah thank you very much for your time and your like and your subscribe i hope you enjoy the video and um yeah if there are any issues technical issues like the mic or anything like that or the sound quality was average i'm probably gonna get a clue once i upload the video but i might think something is fine and you guys don't agree with it or whatever comments you want to put below just put them on and let me know and uh yeah i'm also gonna put a link to the instagram and uh my Facebook page that I'm gonna start up which I haven't yet so yeah 
thank you very much. Uh, have a lovely day, and uh, I hope all of you delightful delinquents are doing well. And yeah, just enjoy your weekend. This has been Pixel Therapy. Peace.